Hello everyone and welcome to CK Med. My name is Clark and I'm going to be taking you through cranial nerve 7, facial nerve, today. And this is going to be a video that emphasizes the parasympathetics, the special sensory, as well as the motor function of cranial nerve number 7, including its processes of how it exits the skull and uh, it's a little bit more into clinical as far as if you damage what's going to be lost. So let's go ahead and dive into this right now. So again, I'm utilizing the uh, University of Utah uh, medical program uh, resource, uh, and this is posted as a link below the video here, as well as on our Facebook page. Uh, super, super amazing resource. Uh, I've never seen anything so helpful as far as any topics in medical school thus far uh, as this has been. So. Um, for cranial nerve number seven, which is our facial nerve, it's important to understand its basic function. So facial nerve includes motor for uh, facial functions such as facial expressions. Uh, so this is the nerve for facial expression. It also does taste on the anterior two thirds of the tongue and does uh, parasympathetics for salivation of the submandibular sublingual glands and as well as your lacrimal gland for tearing. It also serves a little bit extra for uh, keeping the palate and nasal cavities nice and moist by secreting mucus secretions there. And that's pretty much it as far as a general function for uh, the uh, facial nerve. So how does this set up? So facial nerve travels along with uh, cranial nerve number eight, which is our uh, vestibular cochlear nerve, uh, through the internal acoustic mucus. And here is a uh, a location that holds all of the fiber. So if we damage the internal acoustic meatus, we're losing every bit that I just described of facial nerve or cranial nerve number seven. So this is going to include all your special sensory parasympathetics for secretions and your motor. Uh, so that's if you damage the internal acoustic meatus. Now as you move further down, you're going to start to to break off little branches and, and not be hindering or damaging some of these other things. So if I damage here at this location, we're just going to lose our motor. We're not going to lose any of the sense of taste. We're not going to lose any of the secretions or anything like that. Uh, this is known as the stylomastoid foramen. This is just where the motor portion comes out for the facial nerve, which we'll get to in just a second. So uh, if we are following this uh, if we look into the brain stem, we have what is known as our motor facial nucleus. And you can see this uh, through uh, horizontal slices, through histology, uh, as well as uh, through pictures and such like that when you get into your neuro material. Um, but for right now, the most important thing is to know that there is a nucleus and it has the cell bodies for our preganglionic uh, fibers um, as far as uh, our brainstem has. There's also our superior salivatory or preganglionic. So these uh, motor uh, facial nuclei are really our motor nuclei, our motor fibers actually are single motor length fibers. Or they don't synapse on any ganglion, they simply go straight from the, the brainstem out to the muscles. So uh, what are some of the ones that this does? The first one that comes off actually in the middle ear um, is known as your uh, stapedius branch or stapedius nerve. And this goes to your stapedius muscle, which is important for stabilizing uh, the uh, muscles in the middle ear, or the, yeah, the bones inside the middle ear to dampen sound in case there's high intensity sound. So if you're at a very loud concert, you're gonna wanna strengthen this muscle to decrease the sound input into your uh, inner ear, which could damage your hair cells. You don't want a lot of that. So yeah, you want to increase the strength of the stapedius nerve, and that comes from the facial nerve. As this motor comes down, it now branches off in that uh, uh, ear canal and follows the facial canal. The facial nerve then continues and exits the skull via the stylomastoid foramen. Remember in our skull we had our little point, the styloid process uh, that has several attachments of muscles for the tongue and pharynx. Uh, but it also is important for um, a locational landmark because this is right where the facial nerve exits out, the stylomastoid foramen. As it comes out here, it gives off uh, a few uh, branches to the stylohyoid, posterior belly digastric, and posterior auricular nerve. 
those are motor nerves that go uh, around to some muscles uh, just under your jaw. And then as it continues, it passes through the parotid gland and branches out into five branches, your temporal nerve, zygomatic nerve, buccal, mandibular, and cervical. And if you took your hand and you slapped it on your face with your thumb up near uh, your temporal bone and your pinky down just under your jaw, that's exactly how these branches go out. So your temporal nerve goes up to your forehead uh, to innervate your forehead muscles, your temporalis. Uh, and um, temporal muscles, and then uh, your zygomatic branch, uh, that allows you to lift up your eyebrows. Zygomatic branch heads to your eye, this allow, uh, and your cheek, your cheekbone. This allows you to close your eye. This is an uh, important branch for that. Your buccal nerve goes to your buccinator, which uh, is uh, a, a muscle that's right in your cheek, that it keeps uh, your cheek taut, so food doesn't kind of get stuck uh, in the side of your mouth and you don't start drooling out of your mouth. And then you have your mandibular nerve which goes down to your mandible and, and it doesn't control uh, muscles of mastication, just the muscles of your facial expression at your chin and your mandible. And then you have your cervical nerve which goes down your neck, your platysmus, to innervate that for grimacing. So these are all nerves involved with facial expression as given by the name facial nerve. Now, uh, if we backtrack back into the uh, middle ear and all the bone bonus structure surrounding the middle ear, we do give off uh, these fibers, parasympathetics and special sensory. So let's go back a little bit into the midbrain, uh, or medulla, I'm sorry. In the medulla, we have what is known as our superior, uh, uh, superior uh, sol sol solitarius uh, nucleus, tractus solitarius. So this uh, superior salivatory a nucleus or sal saltatory nucleus is important for uh, understanding or uh, perceiving special sensory taste. So that's what this blue is. So the special sensory taste goes and travels along the facial nerve and continues down and because it's sensory fiber we have our little geniculate ganglion where this cell bodies are and they come down and they branch off onto what is known as corda tympani. Corda tympani carries parasympathetics and special sensory that comes down and exits out what is the petrotympanic fissure. This is not super important. It's more important around this area. So this corda tympani uh, travels behind uh, the tympanic membrane, so you can actually damage it if you pierce that tympanic membrane. Um, that's the nerve that actually you, you hurt if you do that. Um, corda tympani then travels out of the skull and joins up with lingual nerve. So this is, lingual nerve is part of the a branch of your V3 or your trigeminal V3 branch. Uh, it hops on a lingual nerve very shortly and then branches off into the lingual nerve, uh, that portion that goes to the tongue. So this special sensory taste goes to the anterior two thirds along with lingual nerve from uh, V3's general sensory fibers that go to general touch, like touch, uh, vibration, and proprioception of the tongue uh, is carried by V3, but special sensory comes down onto that for taste. But then again, uh, that sensory fiber is going to send messages back up through corda tympani into facial nerve. Um, now, as far as parasympathetics that travel along this corda tympani, the parasympathetics come down and only very shortly on lingual nerve, and they hop off onto what is known as the submandibular ganglion. This is where presynaptic parasympathetics become postsynaptic parasympathetics. They synapse in this submandibular gland to come to the submandibular salivary gland and sublingual. These cause secretions of very liquidy uh, secretion of, of um, saliva into the mouth, uh, and they are located uh, just under the jaw uh, and under the tongue. Then we have um, parasympathetics that branch off more in, or, uh, superiorly. And again, both of these parasympathetics arise from the superior salivatory nucleus. So this is very important. This is where our preganglionic cell fiber or cell bodies are located or in our superior salivatory nucleus uh, for cranial nerve seven. So this travels along on the facial nerve going through the internal acoustic meatus and then in the uh, middle ear bone, uh, bonus structures and the um, middle ear bones, it's going to break off 
as and branch off as the greater petrosal nerve. The greater petrosal nerve goes through the greater petrosal hiatus and continues on as the greater petrosal nerve. Once it gets near the pterygoid canal, so there's a nice little uh, area uh, known as the pterygopalatine fossa. This area just uh, under the cheekbone is where this nerve kind of exits the skull. And how it exits is the pterygoid canal. So greater petrosal nerve exits the pterygoid canal. And this becomes the nerve of the pterygoid canal. Very simple um, and, and oriented to where its location is. Now these parasympathetic fibers synapse at this ganglion. And guess where we are? We're in the pterygopalatine fossa. So this is going to be your pterygopalatine ganglion. This pterygopalatine, maybe write this about 10, 15 times just so you can get down what that name is. It's a little confusing. I've never heard it before, before I learned this. But this is a pterygopalatine fossa holding the pterygopalatine ganglion. So this is where you have your post-ganglionic parasympathetic uh, uh, cell bodies are located here. This goes to innervate um, and, and secrete mucus secretions uh, in your nasal, uh, nasal cavity and your palate just to keep them moist. Very simple. But most importantly, this is where fibers hop up onto V2, trigeminal V2 maxillary, then travel via zygomatic and communicating to get to the lacrimal so you can cry. So again, facial nerve, everything having to do with facial expression. So when you're sad, you need to cry. So it's going to be greater petrosal, pterygoid ganglion, or pterygopalatine ganglion, V2, zygomatic communicating lacrimal. And then facial expression for everything else. Motor is going to be your facial nerve, stylomastoid foramen, and these five branches, temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, cervical. Ten zebras bit my cookie. And then finally, our, timp our corda tympani for special sensory taste, joining lingual. So if you cut corda tympani before lingual, you'll lose... Uh, You'll have dry mouth and you'll have lack of taste. If you damage it here uh, at lingual nerve, you're going to damage uh, and lose. You're going to have dry mouth. You're going to have loss of taste and general sensory of your uh, because that's what the posterior division lingual nerve does of uh, trigeminal. If you damage it just here in lingual, you'll lose special sensory and general sensory of your tongue, but you won't lose uh, your secretions of saliva, so you won't have dry mouth. So that's going to be it for facial nerve. Hope this helps. Check out our other videos. Cranial nerve 9 coming up.